I have multiple tarot decks, and some of them are very blunt and will slap you upside the head and call you an idiot. And other ones are a little nicer and a little gentler about the way they deliver the message. Bubbles. Dark basement. Scuttles. Grenades. The Great North Witches Collective. Hey witches, it's Rose. Welcome to the Witchway episode for April. I want to apologize for the lack of content lately. We've had some technical difficulties, uh, but also want to remind everyone, if you have Witchway questions, please feel free to email us. Uh, you can find our contact info at greatnorthwitches.com. As well, we're doing monthly roundtables. So if you want to join us for one of those, meet us at the Great North Witches Collective Facebook group. Our monthly roundtable events allow other witches to come join us with our conversations about a chosen topic, and we'd love to hear your perspective and take on your own witchy practice. So be sure to join us there. And on to the show. This is our question for Witch Way this month. I have a lot of stress around using my tarot cards. Sometimes I turn over a devil card or something worse, and it can ruin my whole day. Is there something you witches do so your tarot cards aren't as stressful, or do you do a certain spell when you get a bad card? So much to I, say. I was so gonna say, to I'm gonna say. learn so much from you right now. Let's do it. Okay. So for me, this whole thing, like that's where people think that tarot cards are like, oh, it must be evil because there's evil imagery in it. There, there's not. There's really not. The devil card um, just signifies change. It mm-hmm. signifies that you're holding oh, exactly. yourself. I, I consider it addiction. Sorry, my okay. devil card is. Yeah, it's my like it. The things like death, the devil card, the tower, all the big scary ones. There's one with swords that tends to be scary to the people as well. Three of swords. Yeah. Three of swords. Anything five like stabbed in the heart. Yeah. Score. I literally did a tarot reading last night and got three fives, and I was like. <laughs> Oh, but oh, okay. <laughs> like, let's say, let's take the devil. It's like people take it to face value, and you're not supposed to. Just like death, death is the ending of something, and it potentially means new beginnings. The devil isn't there to be scary and to be like, oh, I'm the devil, and now I'm gonna possess you today, and I'm gonna, you know, be this entity today. Uh, it, it's not like that. The devil is there to make you reflect on your own decisions. What's keeping you where you're at right now? What's keeping you in your cycles? Like, it's there to make you question. How do you use your will to get out of something? Look at yourself. What? Where's your power in getting yourself out of a situation? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I, I have such an issue with 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 people just taking tarot card at face value because there's so much decoding to do like the colors the numerology in them and why it's why there's that imagery um it's to not take it to face value because it doesn't mean what hollywood makes it mean what's what hollywood makes it seem they're kind of like an archetype too. Yeah. For shadow work as well. Yeah. I don't know if everyone else knows. I that. well, so I, mean, I was gonna say like I have an easy answer for this, and I have a, a another answer that's a little more work involved to it. I have multiple tarot decks, and some of them are very blunt and will slap you upside the head and call you a fucking idiot, and other ones are a little nicer and a little gentler about the way they deliver the message. And I think if your tarot deck is giving you such anxiety that it's going to ruin your whole day. Maybe you need to try a lighter tarot deck that's not going to be so anxiety inducing for you. I mean, I, I have, I just like to collect them. I think they're beautiful and I love the different artwork in all of them, but I also love how each deck has its own personality to it. Some days I need to slap upside the head. Some days I need someone to be like, it's gonna be okay. I rarely use those decks, but you know, sometimes I'm a little sensitive and I'm like, okay, like, can you just give it to me gently? The harder answer is, is you probably need to do some shadow work around why things like the devil card or the tower card and what they symbolize and what their messaging is. Maybe you need to do some shadow work around why that is so detrimental to you why that affects you so much that it's going to why why a single card is going to throw off your entire day it's just a card it's not a concrete i mean i think there's a lot of misconception around like tarot cards as like 
reading the future. It's it's not about reading the future. It's about forcing you to look at things from a perspective that you wouldn't ordinarily to give you a different view on it, right? And to tell you, kind of help you figure out why these things are happening this way. And it's really a stepping stone to shadow work. Well, so I was going to ask, does anyone find their tarot cards predictive? Uh, so, so. I would say yes, but... Not in the way. I, I heard, I, I don't remember where I heard this, but it's like, there it's not like an absolute thing when you read a tarot card. Like it's, you read it and then it's like, if you continue along the path that you're on right there, then this is maybe a likely outcome. So I, I like I said, they're not absolute. And I really agree with what Nika said about doing the shadow work. I think that that has an incredible, a lot of value because it's like, there's so many different meanings to the more difficult cards to read, like the devil or the tower and whatnot. And, it may, I think the tower involves like a lot of transformation and a lot of change in your life. And sometimes that can be a really good thing. Sometimes it can be unexpected, but like the tarot cards are not like light and fluffy and, and, you know, positive all the time. It's just giving you like a kind of a reality check. Mm -hmm. Um, when you talk about shadow work, mm -hmm. I use my Oracle cards on Sundays to ask like, is there a message or anything I need to know or like prepare for for this week? Um, and then I have been doing three and I will tuck that card in like the little guidebook that it comes with. And throughout the week, I will revisit that. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting how through the week, my what I thought that related to turned into something very different, but still just as valid, if not more so. So it's not predicting the future per se. But I feel like it does help me prepare and get into a mindset of what the possibilities could be. It's like running themes for you or something. Yeah. See, and it's funny because I like to do it almost reverse. I like to do like a single card pull at night mm -hmm. to be like, what's, oh. what's the message I need to learn from today? Mm -hmm. So I pull that card and, you know, whatever card comes up and I'm like, okay, well, what am I associating this card to with happened today? Yeah. And what message do I need to take from that what lesson do I need to take from that and like I said it's it's a way for me to to force my perspective into a way that I wouldn't have necessarily come to on my own without that mm -hmm. nudge or shove yeah. depending which deck I'm using for you yeah. for the people who use oracle cards over tarot cards was there a conscious decision to do oracle or was that just how it ended up those were the cards that I they sure. just came yeah. like it was just told you have to wait for your deck and that was my deck that came um, i have tried so hard to get into oracle decks i own okay i have two goddess oracle decks and i don't use them for readings i actually use them for spell work i use them to channel the specific archetype archetypal goddesses that i want to use and i use them on my altar specifically for my deities that i have altars for uh i have two other two or three other oracle decks because again i just like to collect things they're pretty mm -hmm. and i love looking at them and the imagery is great but i cannot connect with them because i've in my experience at least oracle decks are like so far to the light and fluffy side mm -hmm. that i'm just like okay can you just tell me the fucking truth you need bossier cards yeah like i just i feel like it's like tiptoeing and dancing around you know the topic instead of being like okay listen like just so you understand Here. my desire to kick people in the face. Yes. <laughs> I feel like my oracle cards are preparing me to get into tarot, though, because I'm I'm practicing with them. Like, I see the border, and then that's, like, the underlying theme, and I'm reading the card, and I'm doing things with it that I'm starting to feel more open to tarot and that I'm more prepared to not feel how the person who sent the question is, like, afraid of it or what does that mean, but more, like, welcoming, like, the devil doesn't mean the devil. It just mean I feel like a big difference for people between like tarot and oracle. Tarot is pretty rigid in mm -hmm. this card means this and this mm -hmm. card means this and this card means this. Whereas like so I mean like every tarot deck you get, mm -hmm. for the most part, there are some minor differences depending on the decks that you're getting and there are some minor changes. But for the most part, you know, the devil is always the devil card and the tarot with the tower is always the tower, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas every single Oracle deck is different. Mm -hmm. Like there, mm -hmm. there is no unifying theme or method to Oracle decks. Every single one is different based on 
the artist and the person who created it it allows it to be a lot more intuitive yeah. um and and allows you to kind of pick a theme that speaks to you more right mm-hmm. whereas i mean with tarot you're picking the imagery that speaks okay. to you and the messaging is always the same whereas like it's the whole theme with oracles that is pulling people in. And if you want something a little more chaotic, go to bone reading or tea leaf reading. That's true. <laughs> right? But can you ruin a person's day with bone <laughs> Oh, reading? yeah. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so if you do a tea leaf like, reading and you see a skull in the bottom of your cup, do you think that's good news? Yeah. All right. And that was our Which Way Witches. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe on whatever app you're listening to. It goes a long way towards helping us create more content. And as always, feel free to check us out at greatnorthwitches.com and meet us at the Great North Witches Collective group on Facebook so you can come join our magic. Bubbles. Dark basement. Scuttles. And nails. The Great North Witches Collective.